chaos is taking over stock markets all around the globe. Traders have been in total panic since last Friday, when a number of leading stocks crashed and oil prices significantly plunged after a wave of infections caused by a new virus variant was recorded in South Africa and several European countries, leading to another round of lockdowns, travel restrictions, and reigniting concerns about the economic impacts of the health crisis. The S&P 500 had its worst day since February, as several nations around the globe, including the U.S., reimposed travel bans from a half dozen African countries. The sudden uncertainty spooked otherwise bullish investors who had thought that the worst of the health crisis was over. The prospects of new prolonged and strict lockdowns disrupting global production have shaken the market, which had seen a robust performance in recent weeks. However, according to some market watchers, this initial reaction was just the beginning of the meltdown. As countries continue to assess the risks of the new variant, volatility will become more widespread and cause even sharper drops. Where the market is selling off so dramatically is a product of, yes, this is bad news, but also the fact that we have had a pretty strong run with relatively low volatility for a while explained Kieran Ganesh, a strategist at UBS Global Wealth Management. Most investors were pricing the stocks for perfection and forgetting about our economic reality, but the day of reckoning seems to have arrived, and they're just realizing that the risks are much more dangerous than they've anticipated. Last Thursday, U.S. stock markets were closed for the Thanksgiving holiday, and on Friday, traders logged out early, which some argue may have contributed to the delayed response compared to other markets around the world. Thin trading over the weekend is also likely to exacerbate the swings throughout this week, but the carnage so far has been considerable. On Friday, the market's decline pushed the S&P 500 down from a record high reached just last week, closing 2.3% lower. The Nasdaq Composite Index fell 2.2%, while European stock markets fell 3% to 5%. In recent months, investors have been mainly worried about supply chain disruptions and shortages of labor and goods, factors that are still fueling inflation growth as the price of everything skyrockets. Central banks have already announced plans to withdraw stimulus to fight rampant inflation rates, which many believed would be the pin to pop the stock market bubble. But the unexpected emergence of a new virus strain has brought their focus back to a problem that never really went away. The health crisis and new variants remain one of the biggest risks to markets and are likely to continue to inject volatility, as pointed out by Keith Lerner, a strategist at Truist, in a recent note to clients. On the other side of the globe, Japan's Nikkei 225 index dropped by 2.5%, and the Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong declined 2.7%. In Europe, energy stocks pushed the market down, with the Stocks Europe 600 Index down 3.7%, the FTSE 100 in Britain plummeting 3.6%, and other major stock indexes in France and Spain plunging about 5%. By Monday, the S&P TSX Composite Index had fallen 487.28 points, now at 21,125.9, with all but nine of the 231 stocks that make up the index recording a negative performance. The hardest hit sectors were those in which companies have rebounded from recent global progress in getting the health crisis under control, such as airlines and other hospitality stocks. On top of that, Energy stocks have sunken as oil prices collapse more than 13%. Oil company MEG Energy Corporation stock dropped almost 11%, while Crescent Point Energy Corporation fell 8.6%. Oil prices are getting absolutely smoked here, highlighted Mike Archibald, Vice President and Portfolio Manager with AGF Investments, Inc. 
This would be the worst day since the plunge that we saw in April of last year when the price of oil went negative. Archibald argued that we're yet to see more aggressive market moves in the coming days as more information is released to the public. We're going to need to be patient and see how this continues to evolve over the coming days. But clearly, the market is nervous as to whether or not this is going to result in another Delta variant-like condition, he said. The market usually never bottoms on a Friday, Archibald explained, so investors should brace for more volatility and likely more negative headlines this week. Of course, as the economic impacts of this variant are just starting to be felt, what happened so far was just the beginning of an intense financial meltdown that's gonna result in a massive stock market crash over the next few weeks. At this stage of the bubble, all evidence points that the market has already reached its peak. And from now on, the only way to go is down. It's one thing when a single market indicator, or even a few indicators, show weakness, says John Hussman, president of the Hussman Investment Trust. It can be hard to draw major conclusions from small sets of numbers, but it's a very different thing when dozens of indicators start to issue red flags at the same time, he argues. Across four decades of work in the financial markets and over a century of historical data, I've never observed as many historical indications of a market peak occurring simultaneously, Husband said in a recent note. Despite speculative highs in the S&P 500 and Nasdaq indices, our gauges of internals reflect persistent divergence here with notable deterioration in recent weeks, he continued. The preponderance of warning flags we observe here are occurring in the context of the most extreme valuations in history, coupled with market internals that are already divergent, added the expert. In a recent interview with Business Insider, Hussman cited some very alarming indicators that expose that conditions are set for a sizable stock market crash. In this first chart, the red bars represent occasions where the S&P 500 is at highs by a number of measures. However, the number of stocks at 52-week highs and lows is alarming, and less than three-quarters of stocks are above their 200-day moving averages. Here, we can see a simple tally of technical indicators that typically show up during market peaks. Right now, it's beyond levels seen during the dot-com bubble. The red bars are actually presented on a log scale because the tally is beyond anything we've ever observed. The previous record was March 27, 2000, the day after the tech bubble peaked, explained Hussman. Now, in this chart, we have another tally of indicators that consider bullish sentiment, inflation, rising rates, valuations, waning participation, and divergent leadership. Investors might respond with, yeah, but the ISM is above 50, or yeah, but the yield curve isn't inverted, or yeah, but we're not in a recession, or yeah, but earnings are estimated to increase, or with a dozen other yeah, but considerations, husband said. The problem is that many of the things that investors associate with market losses emerge only after the market has turned lower. As investors should remember from the 1987 crash, a recession isn't required, he added. The investor believes that there's no way this bubble can last for much longer and that future returns will be dismal. The same view is shared by the Bank of America, which has continued to lower its expectations for S&P 500 returns going forward. The bank's chief U.S. equity strategist, Savita Subramanian, said that as valuations keep climbing higher and higher, she now expects negative 0.5% returns for the index over the next decade. The bank does foresee a crash coming, but their prediction seems quite timid, 
According to Supramanian, the S&P 500 will drop by 20%, emphasizing that 15 of the 20 valuation measures she watches are historically high. But considering the extension of the tech bubble, the burst is likely to generate a harsh ripple effect and lead to a much more meaningful collapse. Another matter of concern for the markets right now is how the government will handle this new virus wave. If it decides to enact strict movement measures again, more trouble will be ahead. As the managing director Uday Kotak, Kotak Mahindra, wrote on Twitter this week, the new strain has scared the market over the past few days, but something else will arise tomorrow. People, markets, and policymakers worldwide will shoot from the hip in crisis management without data. Welcome to the never normal world we live in. According to a senior administration official, the United States is already drafting new health measures to curb contagion. While the U.S. economy continues to be plagued by shortages and acute price increases, the Fed won't be able to ignore today's rampant inflation levels and will be forced to turn hawkish on policy very soon. Last month, inflation rose to the highest levels in over three decades, largely surpassing economists' expectations with the consumer price index up almost 6% year over year. Jay Powell talks about transitory, or certainly did for a long time, and got mocked for it because we're watching things that look pretty permanent coming in. David Hunter, the chief macro strategist at Contrarian Macro Advisors, outlined in a recent interview, the problem is transitory doesn't mean in the next six months. Transitory could play out through the bust. If we get up to six or seven percent inflation numbers, they're not going to be able to argue transitory anymore. They're going to doubt themselves whether it's transitory or how much is transitory, and that means they're going to have to tighten, he continued. Hunter, just as many other market veterans, including Harry Dent, Michael Burry, Jeremy Grantham, and Robert Kiyosaki, are calling for the biggest stock market crash in world history. He sees that tightening measures will cause stocks to crash to a tune of about 80%, marking the largest drop since 1929. Given that the bubble has been popped, and the mounting risks have become too unbearable, the amount of evidence supporting their view is definitely alarming. What markets have gone through so far is just a slight indication of what is coming next. It's safe to say that this is game over. The stock market crash no one thought was possible is already upon us. It is all downhill from here on.